Hello there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled Boeing 777 Fuel Dumping. Now, I think most of you probably know that I'm a retired uh, airline uh, captain. I spent my last 13 years on the Boeing 777, flying mostly international, and I spent a good part of that as a line check airman. This um, incident here was just one of my regular flights, though. It wasn't uh, an instructional or checking flight. We had the, uh, the 777 come in from Chicago, landed at Beijing, and this is a picture of the, uh, the new Beijing terminal. Uh, the aircraft landed at Beijing. It came in with a couple of problems that had developed. Uh, one of them was a pressurization problem, and the other was a fuel indication problem. And the 777 has a, multiple, a multitude of sensors out in the wings and uh, the center tank uh, to measure uh, fuel quantity, usually using a capacitive method. But there had been some issues that were written up, and of course we had a, about a two-hour turn or so. Maintenance comes out, and they address the issues, uh, supposedly, and uh, write everything, sign it off. Aircraft's good to go. So we take off. I'm on my way um, up to uh, Chicago, and this was an ETOPS uh, cleared flight. And ETOPS means engine turning or people swin swimming. Actually, it's been it's engines uh, extended uh, twin overwater operations. And it became extended range overwater operations. Basically, uh, when we went from four engines or even three engines on the uh, 47 DC-10L, 1011, people got a little concerned because now if something goes wrong, you're down to one engine. So we have a lot more hydraulic pumps. We have a lot more fuel pumps, a lot more electrical backup systems and um, the backup capabilities on this aircraft are fairly amazing but there are still rules and you cannot enter these regions where you have up to 180 minutes where you could fly on one engine um, without certain conditions being met well they didn't fix the pressurization problem we were having uh, an issue with the uh, it was a, a pressurization valve and uh, going into the air conditioning pack and we also started to have the same fuel indication problem. Now, you determine fuel quantity a number of ways. You, you know how much fuel was put on. You dare do various calculations, cross-checks, and then you know how much you're burning. So if you're starting to get an erroneous indication on the quantity, uh, you still have other methods uh, to know what, uh, what fuel load you have. But Unfortunately, we were getting some erroneous indications, and I talked to our dispatch people, and they said, no, nah, you got to go back. So we're an hour out. We have to turn around, and I tell uh, the control center, air traffic control over there in China, that we need to return. Uh, because we looked at various alternatives, and Beijing was the, the closest place where we could turn and get uh, proper support, hopefully. So we're coming back, it's an hour to go back, and we're going to have to dump fuel. Now, there are various uh, parameters on fuel dumping. You can dump, if you're using the pumps in the wing tanks and the two pumps in the center tank, you can dump 5,400 pounds a minute. Um, if you're only doing the wings, it's 3,100 pounds. So if you use kind of an average, because um, you can dump the center tank dry, but the uh, wing tanks can only go down to 11,500, supposedly, before it automatically shuts off. Well, the, uh, to dump, we needed to get down to our maximum landing weight and we needed to dump, uh, 200,000 pounds of fuel, which is roughly 30,000 gallons of fuel. Very unfortunate to have to do this for, uh, maintenance that wasn't handled properly. All right. We got some time. Uh, this is an evening takeoff. The people are hungry. I'm uh, talking to flight tents about what we're going to do. This is really a, a non-event. We just need to go back. We're going to dump fuel and we're going to go back. It's really not a, a, a safety of flight situation in any respect uh, that they'd have to brief the cabin or anything like that. It's, it's just a return. So um, they said, well, how about if we serve dinner? We've got a couple of hours. So away they went and they started serving dinner. So we got an hour flight back. And instead of directing us out of the out over the ocean, which I would have thought they would have done, they actually took us over some farmland, uh, which I thought was rather interesting. Well, we get set up in the dump area, and of course we go through the procedure, and usually you only play with this in the simulator, but this is the picture I took from the airplane. We got the uh, 
the dump nozzles are on and the system is armed and we can uh, pull a knob here where we can go um, where we dump to a certain uh, fuel remaining and and down on this next instrument there we go we have um, uh, the fuel we want to go down to to remain which gets us just at our maximum landing weight we'll be a little bit below that by the time we come in and land and it gives the remaining jettison time it shows the synoptic there with the two wing tanks on either side and it shows the center tank and you can see on the wing tanks there are two little squares there that normally they're um not illuminated but they're illuminated with a green line going down to the dump manifold and the two pumps in the center tank have been opened and they're also dumping so we're on our way we're going back and forth across this it takes almost an hour to dump this fuel and here's part of the uh the checklist procedure it's a electronic checklist it comes up and you go through it and when you do the various items it's a very smart aircraft um when you hit the uh fuel jettison arm switches that becomes uh checked and then you continue down the uh, checklist to do the fuel dumping and the dump comes out of the uh the nozzles on the wing there um didn't have a picture of one of our airplanes doing it, but there was a competitor who did it, uh, some fuel dumping, and people happened to get a few pictures. And this is sort of what the farmland looked like. And, and typically, and we, we were high enough, but typically if you're above 3,000 feet, it's supposed to dissipate and uh, not hit the ground. We had to fill out an environmental um, impact statement with this fuel dumping, which is kind of interesting because if you've ever been to Beijing, you know the air quality is absolutely atrocious and we certainly didn't help it out but so uh we had to fill out that assessment we took about an hour dumping over the farmland which really surprised all of us i guess they were wanting some oil on their salads but uh we concluded with the dump went in it was actually the co-pilot's leg so he went in and uh, landed the aircraft and they were they brought out a uh, a new valve and they were able to uh to correct the problems but unfortunately the uh, the flight had to be rescheduled because we have um, rather stringent crew duty day limitations and by uh, we had racked up a, uh, almost four hours of flight time on this little event and by the time we had done that and getting it fixed going back out we would it would have exceeded our crew duty day and were illegal so that was the end of that and we stayed an extra day in Beijing so more shopping for all sorts of uh, little uh, devices anyway. That's the story of my fuel dumping. And if, uh, if you're a 777 pilot or you've been on the 777 for any length of time, you usually have at least one fuel dumping story. Um, if you go a good decade of flying it, you will end up at some time having a problem where you need to dump fuel and come back. Anyway, thanks for watching.